You are now in the realm of enlightenment and transformation. Welcome to Chief Speaks. All music performed and produced by you. Enlightenment comes from allowing yourself to journey through the dark shadow of death, the primordial abyss of wisdom's waters. For it is the treasures and mysteries that lie waiting in the dark that transform us and propel us to a new enlightened state. One should never aspire to live in the light nor the dark, but should journey between the two in order to evolve the overall reality into a self-actualized creation. Knowledge is your light. As wisdom is your darkness, the bold interplay of the two in your life leads you to an enlightened understanding of yourself and the inner verse you've created. Male is your enlightenment. Female is your transformation. Child is your evolution. Woman, accept the light into your darkness, so it may enlighten you. Man, go bring your light boldly into the darkness so that it may transform you, enlighten you. you i love you so much because you just don't know what you've just done for me thank you so much wow okay. this is like the best call i've had in ages on btr so this show was was meant for me to be able to hear today and i'm so thankful that's his, uh, his home for now a new pathway has now been cut in order to get to the almighty where there may not have been one so the communication with them if they have enough power and strength i talk to us the communication we get every week that's one of the reasons i don't get into the current events thing too much because it starts to become a perpetual alarm clock that we just keep hitting snooze on i speak to the ascended masters quote unquote i talk about spiritual stuff but i also speak about some very practical we can do today things be as natural as you can be with your spiritual you can't always go by your feelings because your feelings are corrupted your feelings are just as corrupted as everything else your chakras and everything else you got to know what's beyond you and that's why we have elders we can't do everything you can't get everything out of books or or weekend certification. You can have the most powerful, ancient, oldest, most, as far as you know, truthful tradition in your hands. And if you still have a, a dirty um, spirit, you're not gonna get anything out of it. You're not gonna learn anything. You're not actually gonna grow. I try to teach in a way where I make myself obsolete. That's always been my goal, to make myself obsolete. Um, I really wanted to, you know, kind of big you up, um, you know, I think you're awesome. There's a lot of elders out here right now that that want to know what's going on. They're not getting on Twitter and stuff like that, but they want to be up on, on the new stuff. You know, sit down and have some conversations with them. You know, it's not always about hearing their story. It's also about being news reporters for them and letting them know, like, yeah, this is what's, what's happening right now. They may tell you something about what happened in Charleston that you couldn't even... Your spirituality has to create the same spiritual family, okay? And that family exists first inside of you. You have to express the different expressions of, of that rainbow coalition of, of, of spirits inside of you first. Okay, don't don't let communities hijack that rainbow. The problem is when we come into the conscious community, the dudes are doing the same thing that the women are doing. I just want to say that I really enjoy your show every Sunday, and um, my friend and I call it going to church. You know, when we call him, we're like, you going to church? You know, and I'm like, where have y'all been at? God cannot go against its own truth. So anytime you have an inkling that God is going against its own truth, then God is no longer behaving as God. So therefore, the spiritual community doesn't recognize God. You dig where I'm coming from? Or can we have a new thought? Can we step outside of the books for a second and have a new conversation about hair weaves and wigs? You know, can we have a new conversation about homosexuality? Can we have a new conversation about vegan eating? It's a good day for an exorcism. Three four seven nine four five seven six eight zero. Call in and let's build. When you buy Iyanla's grandpa, grandma, book boy Goon, Ori, Eshu, book boy Risha. Lay I knew. Hey, Ajay, Iyami Osharonga. Greetings, good morning, and welcome to another segment of Chief Speaks. Although, if you're listening in the evening, 
or in the afternoon, I would say good afternoon, good evening to you all coming in from the archives or from the latter YouTube videos. I want to welcome you to this experience. My name is Chief Yuya, and for our first-time listeners, uh, I certainly want to give you an extra warm welcome and invite you into the experience, the ongoing experience, every 11 a.m. Eastern of uh, Chief Speaks. Also, uh, as many of you may know, we do a theme uh, of insight every month, and this month's theme is unity. We're dealing with unity, which is uh, very interesting because uh, last Sunday during Chief Speaks, our brother Zach asked a question uh, in terms of, you know, in regards to unity, and I said, it's very interesting, that's next month's theme, so, you know, things tend to sync up in a beautiful way like that. But in any event, uh, last month's theme was freedom and liberation. And we covered uh, a lot of concepts, and the students also had an opportunity to speak on what freedom and liberation meant to them and how the shows impacted them and what they may have meant to them. Uh, so I definitely urge you to check out that last month's segment if you have not already. They're on YouTube, of course, on Enlightenment and Transformation TV. And, you know, prior to that, all year, all this year of 2016, we started uh, some things new. One thing was doing actual YouTube seg segments as opposed to just audio segments on Blog Talk. But then we also, uh, I mapped out a theme uh, or themes for the year, not only for Chief Speaks, but also for some of our Sedula House addendum classes. And uh, if you haven't signed up for those, I urge you to go and, and try one out. All right, so I'm going to jump right into it. And I'm going to start this month off by reading some of the email questions that came in, not only to the uh, general email box that were forwarded to me, but also I received through various social media um, outlets. I'm on, um, my handle, I should say, is Chief Yuya. So it's Chief Y-U-Y-A. I know a lot of people have a lot of trouble I'm seeing with my name, uh, Yu Ya, I'm seeing Ya Yu and Ya Yo and a whole lot of different things. But, you know, I guess sometimes when things are new or certain sounds are new to our mouth, you know, it's uh, difficult to wrap our head around it, you know. But um, I'm going to jump right into it. So you guys know when I do these, I don't say names. So I'm going to say TJ. So TJ writes and says, please help. This is the most beautiful thing and the most killing. I want to know who I am. I've been listening for three days straight to the YouTube after listening to fluff, symbolism, manifestations of good and bad have come. I accept all. Please help me. I'm walking paths that I have never considered. I can pay payments, but I just need to know who is with me now. I don't know, I'm not sure what you would pay a payment on, but uh, I'll just say, good for you. <laughs> You're on the journey, that's good. You're on the journey. But, um, you know, in regards to your question, who is with you now, you're with you. So there's something that I would like you to replace in your vocabulary. For instance, when you speak to someone and they say, what are you doing, who are you with? Don't say I'm by myself. Say I'm with myself. So you're always with you. If you're looking for who rules your head or who your spiritual guardian is and things like that, you are. You're your spiritual guardian. There's a pataki in uh, our, our Orisha tradition that speaks about uh, a journey that a person takes. And they're, they're taken on this journey and their accompaniment are various Orishas, you know, Ogun, Yimoja, Oshun, Shango, Oko, and all of these different Orishas uh, travel with them. And as the person is going through the journey and they're trying to get to the destination, each Orisha stops off at their patron space. So, you know, one Orisha will, will you know, Yemoja will stay at Ibadan. So, uh, some will go to Remo State. Some will go to this Osokbo, this, that, 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 that. So they don't go the journey the whole way. And the only one that goes home with the person is the ori, the head, the consciousness. So, you know, that's what you want to really, if you know, during your studies right now, that's the first energy you want to learn as much as you can about your consciousness. 
um, your inner being, your aura, you know, your shadow is another thing to learn about. Learn about your shadow. I've done shows on the Ori that you can look up on YouTube. Just type in my name and put in uh, Ori or um, Spirit Guardian and things like that. Now, of course, you have Ileda and you have different other energies that walk with us all. But for now, just focus on Ori. That will be a, a lot easier for you and it will make a lot, a lot more sense for you. But, you know, there's five million deities and gods out there. Um, don't get caught in that trap. If you're coming in new, you can start off right. Start from the center and emanate out from there. And the center of the universe is the sun. And the sun is your first eye. So, you know, start there. And then, and then you can learn more from there. Um, and if you want to know more, you can always get a reading as well from me. Or whomever. Whomever you feel comfortable with. So I got another one here. Need help. Hello, I accidentally came across your site. There are no accidents. I would like to speak to you about a situation I have and trying to invoke Ochosi. I would like to set up an appointment with you when you are available. So the same form that you utilize to send the message, there's a link on that same form that says book an appointment. So you would just do it from there. Just click book an appointment. Uh, if you don't remember where you were or how to get back to that, that site of that page, wherever you came in from, you can just go to askosiris.com. It's real simple. It's just a form. It's just a form. There's no site. You got to click through anything like that. And it's A-S-K-O-S-I-R-I-S.com. Another one. Greetings, Chief Peru T. Asan Anu. You copy and paste it back. You didn't type all that. I'm just messing with you. My name is... Hmm? I have a loved one who may be facing jail time. If you can help in any way, it would be a great increase. What can or should we do? Thank you with sincerity. You have to get a reading from me for something like that. Um, of course, there's, there's general things that I could tell you uh, when one is facing jail time or one is fighting uh, a government system or one is just fighting an enemy, period. But I don't know uh, any of the basis surrounding the actual situation. And I don't know if I can help you. So whenever I'm working with someone, uh, especially with something heavy like that, not only do I diagnose the problem uh, through a reading, but and I, then I determine what the solution is, what, what the prescription should be. But for me, I always find out if I'm the one to do the work or if I can do the work, to, which is, are two different questions. So, and I, I don't know if anyone else does that or whatever, but for me, it's very important. Uh, I don't want you just throwing your money in the wind. Uh, when you're fighting situations like that and work has to be done, there is, a, there is a cost for that. So if I'm not the one who can actually make that situation happen for you, then I don't want you to waste your resources that could go somewhere else or go to, to someone else, all right? So based on that, you need to get a reading first. We need to determine if I'm the man for the job or if someone in my camp is the person for the job or if this is a job that should even be done. Sometimes you got to ride things out, you know, so you want to get a reading for that. That's the, that would be the most intelligent thing to do. And I'm just going to say, keep that concept in mind. Even if you don't work with me, um, just keep the concept in mind should this person do the work or whatever. That's very important. I know a lot of people don't do that, but I'm not just about taking your money and then you have someone still sitting in there and, and I could have sent you to someone else who could have actually, you know, done, done the work that was needed. Right? Um, so get a reading. So we have another one from K.O. And it says, I am... I guess that's your, your spiritual name. Just wondering where I am at in the path. Greetings. Over the last couple of weeks, I have had a feeling of panic and of success. I have written a book that talks about how to stand after residing in chaos. There have been many strange things going on, and I have, fo I have been followed on multiple occasions. I believe that I have two paths in front of me, but I am reaching out to begin the self-initiate process. 
I am a writer and ever since I have written my book, it has been a lot of confusion surrounding me. Fear, especially. How can I overcome this? Here is my website to reach my blog and to review my website. I'm not going to give the website. Um, okay, so I would say this again. This is a situation you need to get a reading because uh, what may be strange to you may not be strange to me. You know, you may say, well, I was walking the other day and I saw a, an inverted crescent moon over a woman's head. You know, I, w I saw a rainbow come out of a guy's ear. You know, I saw a little orange man dancing around this little boy when he was outside riding his bike. Okay, that's all normal stuff to me. So, uh, you know, it, it, sometimes it's difficult to say, well, this is what's going on. Oh, you, you uh, have a feeling of panic and it's, you have to get a consultation. I have to know who you are, what your history is. And, and I don't ask those questions per se, but the reading will tell me who and what you are. All right. Um, so that's what I would, I would strongly suggest for that. I would also say, actually, I'll say that when I'm done. <laughs> so, and some of these, these folks, I know I've, I've spoken to you. I'm going, I went back and grabbed some of the um, messages because I felt that, well, maybe these are some of the ones that other people may, may question about or need to hear as well. So this one is from SA, and it says, I need help, need help, I want to learn Ifa. I live in a foreign place. I won't say where you live. I want to learn Ifa. I was being taught, but, but some stuff happened, and I can't go there anymore. Can I change my mind and go somewhere else to learn, or do I have to go back to the person I was learning from? Question mark, question mark, question mark. I'm stuck and need advice. Bad. I say bad like that because it's all capitals. Well, it depends on who you're studying with. As far as you just wanting to go and study with someone there's nothing wrong with that but um and this is a person now who is joining my class so this was someone i spoke to but you know for everyone else who may have a question like that um no one has a lock or a hold over you like that myself included so if you're studying with someone and for some reason you feel uncomfortable or you just find someone else that has information that resonates with you more there's nothing wrong with going and studying with that person, but, um, you know, you don't want to make decisions based on emotion either, you know. So sometimes I've seen situations where uh, people have gotten involved with their, their teachers or with their spiritual parent. Uh, I guess at that point, you're not, they're not so much of a parent. Um, and things maybe didn't go the way they wanted. And then now they start to fabricate all these reasons why they need to leave. They don't feel safe. They think the person is doing work against them. This, that, that, and the third. Um, so sometimes you want to kind of, you know, repose for, for a moment and think like, okay, why do I really want to leave this situation? Why do I want to go to something else? But as far as the tradition, there's no hard set rule on once you start with someone, you have to stay with them for the rest for your entire journey. Because remember, the only entity that stays with you is the Ori, is your head. So that means even me, your, your instructors, your whomever, you know, your spiritual parents, whatever, there'll be a moment where we're all fade off. The only one who's gonna be with you the day, the day you die is you. That's it. That's the only person you can guarantee who will be by your side on the day you die is you. Okay, this one is from Excess. It says, readings. I've received a couple of readings, so I'd really just like to know how deep does this reading go? Is it literally personal or just lines based on cards that could go for anyone? I actually never answered that one. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, excess. No, they're not just lines on a card, lines based on cards that could go for anyone. Uh, the readings that, at least that I give, are personal. And even if the lines that come up for you are the same ones that came up for somebody else, it doesn't mean the same thing. Um, from That's where you have your psychic energy, your intuition. You know, there's a different mind at work. It's one of the reasons why you can't learn Ifa just from a book. You can learn things about Ifa, sure. But um, it's something that is alive and active inside of you. Uh, in fact, Excess, to be honest with you, I very rarely even need to use any type of cards or anything like that. I can just talk to you and 
do a reading that's just as detailed and uh, invasive into your spirit if I want to because Ifa is in me. It's a lie. I am a Rumila. You know, so, um, no. It doesn't work that way. If that's the case, you could just get an app on your phone. They have like tarot card apps and e king apps on your phone. You just read yourself like that. Okay, so, dear chief, and this is person's name is BC. Greetings, Chief Peru T. Asana New. Yeah, you copy and paste it too. Just joking. I am hoping that you can help me. My nephew is in a situation where he is facing jail time, and I was told that you can help. If this is possible, please let me know the steps. Got to get a reading. Uh, similar to the answer I gave before. There's another one from, I'm going to say SDW. Uh, subject is Clarity. Greetings, Chief Yuya, and blessings to you. I am Ming, and I have been listening to your broadcast off and on. Well, I started last year on my path in trying to gain the knowledge of Ifa and what my calling is, and I stopped seeking guidance because individuals in the practice were and are motivated by greed. I did get a reading in May of 2015 and did not do the Ebo. According to the Baba that did the divination, told me to focus more on the Ebo that involved my mother. My Odu was Ofun Ika. I am not sure if that helps you get a little understanding. I sort of put Ifa on the shelf and studied more the metaphysics, meditation, and understanding myself. While I feel the Orisha slash ancestors are pulling me at, at me and I am getting mixed messages about the practice and how I can invoke them. When I say how I can invoke them, I am actually being told that if I do not have the hand of Ifa and slash or Oshun that I cannot work with them and gain any benefit. I shared with this individual your thought regarding Olokun and the Orishas respect representing an aspect of our consciousness and he immediately said no you have it all wrong and get rid of all that idea. They are deities! Exclamation mark. I am at a crossroad and I have no idea where to go. I am in the mindset that I need someone there in my city to quote unquote carry me according to what other people are advising me that is necessary for my growth. I see that people are approaching this practice from a linear perspective, not even tapping into the spirit in them and self-actualization is not even a conversation. Can you please advise me how to approach this beautiful practice? Much gratitude, S, and she left her phone number. Okay, so if you have an instructor that you're working with or a spiritual parent or Baba as you refer to him and he told you that my information is wrong um, and you trust him and he's spending time with you and he's loving you and he's nurturing your understanding, go with what he's saying. If he says I'm wrong, then, then you know, you got to be totally in the moment with your instructors. I have to tell you that. And sometimes as an instructor, that can be a that could be a little annoying, and that's where you get those those godfathers and godmothers who say, "I don't want you studying with anybody else," you know, because it's like a lot of times with this tradition, and I'm, we're going to get into this a little bit because there's a lack of unity in the tradition itself. Um, people will start to create their own conclusions about things they know nothing about. So, like even in your language, I could I can like hear how little you know about this tradition. And I'm not saying that as a dig. I'm just saying that it just reveals how much you really do need to study with someone, right? So you're going to have to surrender yourself to someone, okay? So you have a desire to learn Ifa. And desire, in order for desire to come into a place of empowerment, desire must go through the pathway of surrender. So you desire Ifa, you have to surrender now to the process needed and then you'll be empowered by it but studying with someone this other individual and then bringing him my teachings for him to either justify prove or disprove is only going to be frustrating to that person all right um so i would strongly suggest that you find someone who can kind of give you your groundwork and build you and rebuild you on up from the bottom to the top, you know, as it pertains to 
E5. I would suggest that, and again, not a dig, but to help you to understand, I would suggest that you probably don't really know anything about E5 at all, or Arisha. I know you probably, like, yes, I do, I, you know, but I would suggest you don't. Um, based on the things that I'm seeing right here that are being said, and that's, um, that's a good thing I'm saying to you, that you don't know anything. That means that you can start fresh and clean if you want, but you got to come in with that mind of humility. As far as, like you said, I put e on the on the shelf and dealt with metaphysics. e is metaphysics. e is meditation. It's the things that you said. Um, so, and at its root, it is self-actualization. So that's what I'm saying. Like, there's a lot that you may be missing in terms of the understanding of what e actually is. And I don't know, maybe no one's ever sat down and said, okay, this is what e is. This is what Oshun is. And this is what your potential and current relationship is to those concepts and, and, and to that cognition. All right. So I would just say that commit yourself, surrender yourself to a teacher. I know that's very hard for people to do. And that's why I tell you guys that, I mean, I've literally, literally had thousands of students over the years, but no, thousands of people who have heard me speak. Thousands of people who have taken my advice. But I've had only a handful of actual students. Because it's not about advice, it's about surrender. I've only had a handful of people who said, okay, I'm, I'm at the altar of your learning. And whatever you tell me is what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to totally immerse myself in. And I'm going to be in that moment. That's rare. So this one's from MJ. And it's about initiation. Peace and love, Chief. Peace and love. My name is MJ, and I just joined the Sedua House community. Right now, I am just relocated back to the place of birth to be closer to my 82-year-old grandmother. This is a very gifted woman who is who the universe chose to raise me. Good. I'm happy for you, actually. I'm happy that you were able to, to get back to your 82-year-old grandmother. That's cool. That's really, really good. You know, I'm happy for you. Um, so I say that to say this. In no way am I trying to get an information free. I get free information all the time. <laughs> but right now, I just want to introduce myself. Thank you. I will be starting employment in my field, my Western field, of mental health therapist this week. Soon after I find a place to stay, I will schedule a reading to start my guidance under you, my earthly teacher and my spiritual reaches. I still, I am still learning, so forgive any mistakes I may speak. Right now, this is the only communication that I have, again, starting over, so phone service right now. So if you respond, it will have to be through email. I do realize you are extremely busy, so I understand if there is no response. Beautifully crafted email, even with your grammatical issues. <laughs> because this is, a, this is a very African approach, you know. Um, I've had a handful of people who have actually introduced themselves, you know, um, when wanting to study under me or studying under me. And that is the right way to do things, you know, introduce yourself. And sometimes people just jump in, like I get emails that say, okay, so this is the situation. And they don't realize I don't care anything about your situation. I don't even know you, you know, so um, peace to you mj and i'm very happy that you've been able to spend some time with your grandmother that's awesome that's really awesome you know all right um and like i said i give a lot of free information all the shows which we're, we're looking at like almost 500 now and um there's a lot of free articles on enlightenment and transformation and it's a dual house um there's rituals on to do so there's a lot of free stuff so um yeah, it's, it's not about just the, the offering. It's sending your offering. Sending your, it's not about that with me, you know. Uh, Dear Chief, here's another one from JD. And thank you again, MJ. Thank you. You know, give grandmother a hug today. Dear Chief, new message from JD. Learning is the subject. My name is Jay. I would like to become a priest. Please let me know what directions one must go to see this through. Thanks. Okay. Well, the fact that you would like to be a priest 
is a little suspect. The priesthood is a calling. It's not a, it's not a um, desire. It's not a yearning. It's not a hankering. It's something that we're called to. So I would say, why do you want to become a priest? Now, of course, you have Anu spiritual training. Um, you should start there and then make a determination if that's something. I've had people who've gone through my training and realized um, this is not something that I can necessarily do for other people because I have so much that I need to do for and with myself. So especially, you know, um, like you have Anu spiritual tra training, phase one through three. And after the third one, there's a test that I administer. And then you have the Anu spiritual order, the Anu order, which is something different. That's the priesthood order. And I'm telling you, people struggle to just to get through phase one, which is really, if I was to compare it to, you know, public school, phase one would be like pre-K to second grade, pre-K to second grade. So, and people are really struggling there, you know, because it's dealing with yourself and fixing some of your stuff before you can move on and start talking to anyone else. So that's what I would say, you know, start with the training. All right, another one, SS, the last one. My life isn't going, need to know is a subject. My life isn't going, my life isn't going as or to don't know. If you could guide me along as to where to start in getting on, and getting thing on the right path. So what you need to do is listen to the shows. You know, sometimes, a lot of times, people ask that question, um, things are not going right for me, how do I get back on the right path, or like, how do I get started in my spirituality? I've already answered it, and I'm, and I'm going to say it like this. I can be a talking head, and people could call me and say, you know, Chief, what do I do, what do I do? And then I give you the same information all over again every time. I could do that. Or I could build something. So that way, what, what I've built becomes the answer to your question. So the answer to how do I get started is over, it's like almost 500 shows that break down so many different concepts. My life isn't going right. What do I do? Um, I knew spiritual training. There's free courses. There's rituals. There's spells. Those things I've put out and this book, Grasping the Root of Divine Power. You know, I put those things out so I don't have to keep repeating myself. <laughs> you know, so sometimes when I see consistent questions coming in, okay, they're always asking about that. Like when I wrote Shrine and Altar, that was because people, oh, I live here, I live here, I want to set up something, I want to set up a shrine. How do I do an ancestral shrine? Okay, well, it seems like everyone has a similar concern, or I'm seeing that people are getting information on the internet, you know, and don't really know why they're putting what they're putting on this shrine. You know, I got nine plates and nine candles. Why? That's, I don't know. That's what I was told. <laughs> you know, you get that type of thing. So in that book, I break down why you set up things the way you set them up. So I would say, you know, with this question, um, and anyone else who may have a question similar, like, what, how do I get started? What do I do? I already gave you the answer. You know, there's, there's services that I've provided. There's products that I've provided. There's lectures and insights that I've provided, provided that show you how to get started. Um, and if you're looking for more of a hand-holding type experience, then you got to know that that's not what I do. Um, so that's, that's not going to happen with me. And sometimes that's what it is. You know, when people are saying, you know, how do I get started and this, and, you know, and everything that I have is how you get started. I have a book, How to Be an African, Grasping the Root of Divine Power. There's your start, you see. So, you know, I would just say that in regards to that. Um, how you get started, how you get your life together, you could always get a reading. But again, if it's something that you're really taking serious, then take a little bit more time to craft a more coherent message. Like this was written, you spell could, C-U-D, you know, like write it so that I can understand what's being said and then answer you intelligently. 
because you may write it in a way where either I don't understand it or I'm you don't know what kind of day I had that day. Maybe I'm just frustrated, I'm a little agitated and I read it and I can't I can hardly understand it and I, I forget this. You know, so you don't want to be cast to the side. You wanna if you're getting something for free, you got someone who you can email a message who will give you some life guidance, then take some time to craft it in a way that is respectful of that person's time. Okay? Spellchecker.net. You can go online and they can check your stuff and your, your grammar and make sure that it's coherent and we can understand what it is that you're asking and what it is that you're saying. So, um, quickly, I'm going to just cover some of the basics of what we want to talk about with unity this month, right? And it's an important topic because, and I think, I think this will be one of those months that, you know, people will really appreciate um, the concept or the videos or the shows or whatever because unity is another, um, in my opinion, my humble opinion, highly misconceived concept, you know, like so many others, unfortunately. And one of the first things that I see that people, and this is similar to the question that uh, Brother Zach Latimer had asked, um, it was last Sunday's Chief Speak, and he was like, you know, does unity mean that we all have to do the same thing? And I said, of course, no, no, absolutely not. In fact, conformity usually is the end of unity. Conformity is the end of unity. Okay, so a lot of times that's what the conception is. Like, even when you come into your consciousness, in order for, for us to show a unified front, we all have to present ourselves the same way. We all have to do the same thing. We all have to wear the same colors. We all got to eat the same foods, you know, things like that. And that's not unity at all. That, in fact, creates more confusion. I gave an example in that segment, and I gave an example about the body. And I said, you know, you have the human body, which does many different things um, for a common goal and purpose. Well, think about how a body is formed. A body is formed from one cell, and that cell multiplies itself. So within the intelligence of that one cell is an, is an imperative, is an idea, is a thought. And that thought then is reproduced throughout every single cell in that in that individual's organism in that organism or that individual's body, right? So each cell has a brain center and that brain center connects to a to a more supreme or higher thought. Similar to how we may look at a, a, a spiritual construct. You know, um, we're all doing different things. We can look at ourselves as cells almost but we're connecting to a higher, more supreme intelligence, whatever we identify that supreme intelligence as. So, unity is not a declaration. You don't jump up one day and say, we're unified. You know, we're doing it this way. We're doing it that way. You know, look at us. We're, we're marching. We're doing drills. Everybody's in formation. That's not unity. Unity is produced. Unity is not declared. You can only produce unity. And in fact, Unity is not a, a concept. Unity is not a, a mental um, place where we go to and say, okay, um, now that we've said it, now that we're all wearing black or we're all wearing white and we're all speaking the same language, we're unified. It doesn't work that way. Unity is not um, a sense of camaraderie. Unity is not, uh, I'm cool with this person or this is my brother or this is my sister. Unity, in fact, is a place, okay? So there are different levels of unity. I should also preface what we're saying by that, but unity is a place. It, it's a place that one arrives at. It's a place slash product. So with unity, like I said, it's, it's a place, it's a, it's a destination, or not even a destination, it's a holding. So what I mean by that, when you have a body, to, a body and every cell within that body is working towards the same higher purpose and goal, then in fact that body itself becomes unity. The body is unity. Okay, so um, it's almost like unity is a, is a noun, you know, and, and not so much of an adjective as we, we use it often. But 
So unity comes to working towards the higher imperative or the original imperative and goals that have been placed inside of a cell or inside of our psyche. So when we speak about, um, again, everyone doing the same thing or camaraderie or we're cool or we're this or we're that, that doesn't create unity. In fact, diversity in most instances creates a sense of unity. If you look at your body, your hand does something different than your foot. You know, your kneecap does something different than your elbow. Your chin does something different than the base of your skull, right? But all of these different parts, they're doing something different for the purposes of keeping this body together and united. In fact, some of you have maybe even experienced, let's say if you, so you may have a problem with your knee, you may have a problem with your right knee, and what you will find out, what you'll find is that when you have an issue with your right knee, over time sometimes maybe your left knee will swell because your left knee, your body automatically is compensating for the problem with the right side, okay? And you're not telling it, okay, compensate. Look out for the other leg, or you're maybe not conscious of it, but your body immediately goes into that mode. Now, that is what we call sympathy, okay? And the strength, the strength, and the cultivation of unity comes through sympathy. Sympathy, there's a, a implication that there's a, there's a form of touching, whether there's a physical touching, or there's a spiritual touching, or there's an emotional touching. And through that touch, we share energy with one another. So let's say you and I are part of our new Life Global Ministries, and I have a certain job to do, right? And you have a certain job to do. And at times we're sharing, because the unity, you know, the, the cultivation of the actual unity comes through kindness. It comes through patience. It comes through playing your position, you know, or it comes through uh, a regeneration of the original thought and spirit. So let's say, for instance, in, in a simple sense, let's say if, if the original thought and spirit of our new life global ministries is true, right? If the original thought and spirit is true and we're all cultivating that, of course, it's going to look different for each person. And that's the, that's the science of reciprocity. You know, when we say reciprocity, you give something, I give it back. I give something, you give it back. But it's impossible to give the same thing back that's ever given because the way I'm going to give it back is different. If you punch me with 50% of your power, and let's say, you know, you're 5'7", 150 pounds, well, me punching you with 50 cents, 50% of my power would probably feel different because of the size difference. Time goes by, you know, in, in every nanosecond we become a different person. There's a regeneration of sorts. So um, what we share changes. So we're always going to give something different, but that touching and that sharing of energy is what strengthens us towards the particular goal. Okay, so sympathy is the strength of unity. Now, the, the charge and the direction of unity comes from the head. Okay, that's that supreme being. So, if you look at the body, for instance, what keeps the body parts doing what, exactly what they're supposed to do? What keeps them in line? Um, what gives them their marching orders or their original orders? It's the head. This is why the ori is so important. The head is so important. You have to also remember, if you don't remember, that the orisha themselves and all of these different archetypes, they are the components of your body. They're your liver, your intestines, your gallbladder, your, your pancreas, your esophagus, your, you know, your lower intestines, and uh, your small intestines, your large intestines. They're all the different components of your body. Okay, so what keeps them, what charges them? If we look at it from a spiritual sense, you know, the orisha are charged by the ori. So, it's, so if the ori has no power, if you have a bad ori, you have bad character, then your orisha will have no power to do the things that they need to do. So you're constantly killing animals every five minutes. You're constantly giving rum. You're constantly giving candles and incense and whatnot because you don't have the charge that's constantly coming down from the ori that's feeding everything. So it's the same thing with your body. The, the actual charge is a constant stream that's coming down from the head that's controlling all of the functions of the body. Okay. And in doing this, now this creates that the body regenerates itself. And it regenerates itself consistently with the idea that the head has given it. It creates unity. Okay? So if we look at this um, in, a, in a more macro sense, 
right? And we look at people and we look at, at individuals and we and like Brother Zach asked a good question, you know, does everyone need to do the same thing? Well, if everyone has the same charge and orders and imperative that they're working with and they're cultivating that and they're employing a sense of unity amongst one another and their work is to preserve the spirit of whatever those original charges are, then they will create a place of unity. They will create a product of unity. But the product of unity comes from the cultivation and the preservation of whatever that original charge was. So let's say, let's say today's my last day. Let's say I'm, I'm dead today. Those who are a member of our New Life Global Ministries would go, well, those real students <laughs> and those real members would maybe go through a list of the things that I've spoken about. Someone may write a book. Someone say, okay, I've compiled the philosophies of, of Chief Yuya or the uh, philosophies on, of our new life global ministries as chair, shared by Chief Yuya, me being the head of this movement. And if they're reading that and they're letting it come alive in them, then what happens is they start to become transformed. But it doesn't mean now that everyone needs to be me. Everyone doesn't need to have chew sticks and, and, and cigars and, you know, everyone doesn't need to have that. Some people may do what they, whatever the, it is that they're chosen to do within the body organism of Anu, but they do it with the imperative and the intent of that original charge. The imperative intent and intent of the standards and the mores that were given by the head, right? And this creates the product that we know to be as unity. This is what creates unity. So it's important just to kind of understand that um, there is diversity and unity. There is diversity. All of the parts of an organism do not have to function the same. They all do not have to look the same. In fact, um, if you just slam parts together, that doesn't mean that you have unity either. You know, sometimes even when we're building organizations, we can look at it too much like it's a machine, similar to like when we're building a family. And you create like a, fran a Frankenstein sort of uh, existence. Where you say, okay, well, I need an arm, I need a leg, I need a head, I need some eyeballs. Let me just grab them here, grab them here, grab them here. Like, you know, it's like, if you've ever looked in some people's mouths, you look in, and all their teeth are, like, running from each other. And you're almost like, I can see every ancestor in your mouth, because every tooth is doing something different. You know, every tooth is a different color. You know, um, it's like there's no sense of unity, right? Um, and not that they have to look the same, but you can tell something was just thrown together and they're not becoming a unit they're not working together you see so it's very similar again when you're building an organization and you're looking for unity it's not about just saying well we need a painter we need an electrician we need a carpenter we need a mechanic we need a speaker we need it's not about that you have to imbue your members with your thought you have to imbue your members with the original charge and the original imperative first so even in the leadership of uh, that we're cultivating in our new life global ministries it's not so much about me sending people to go do this and go do that and go do that it's more about them taking on the mind of our new becoming our new you know understanding what the original charge and the original imperative is then they can they, they they can do what they do they can be diversity they can be autonomy even there can be total liberation and freedom, but that seed is there of I'm acting independently for the benefit of us all. Okay. And a lot of times that thought and that realization that um, what you do is essential and effective in the work of the body is lost on people if they're not doing the exact same thing that someone else is doing. You know, if you, if you look at your body, for instance, um, you have a heart, you have a brain, but then you also have lips and you have eyes, you have nose, you have, you have, an e you have ears, right? And I say that to say that some parts of your body are more prominent than others. You have parts that are inside that no one can see. Of course, certainly if you, you know, stare hard enough, you can look at someone's heartbeat, right? But it seems like the mouth and the hands they get all the action, <laughs> you know, um, they, 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 have, uh, they, they have the most effect almost in the world, one could say. 
But what if the heart said, okay, well, I want to be the hands then? No more body. What if the brain say, I want to be the mouth. I'm telling the mouth everything to say, and no one's giving giving me, you know, credit. You know, so I don't want to be the brain anymore. I want to be on the outside. I want to be in the forefront. See, you know, that creates disunity, or that doesn't even create unity. Now the body dies, because the body itself, remember, is the unity. So um, you're going to have some people who are going to be in the background. You're going to have some people that are going to be in the foreground when you're designing, when you're building something. And each one playing their position and knowing that they are all essential and effective members of that body is what creates the unity that's needed. And again, the charge always comes down from the head. You know, the, and the charge from the head may not even be, this is what I need you to do. It may be, this is what we're here to do. Like I said, it may be that constant charge of truth, 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 truth. We represent truth, we represent truth. We represent, the head may just be giving that. And the sympathy or the acknowledgement of our different essential roles come through that, that, that touching, through that um, aggregation, you know, of us joining and assembling ourselves and say, oh, what are you working on? What are you working on? This is one of the reasons why I, I advocate, you know, the community show on Tuesdays and Thursdays between 1 and 3, which is a time that you can just call in and share and build. And, and um, the last few shows, and I would definitely say even last Sunday's Chief Speaks was a, was a supreme example of what, what I'm talking about. Someone calling in and saying, this is where I'm at, and being being taught, but at getting orders from the head, because I came and I said, listen, come on, stop. This is what you're here to do. Stop playing around. But then getting the sympathy and the touching and the sharing of energy, you know, between the other members. You know, some of us, we may have friends, right, uh, that are so negative that you hate to, yeah, I don't hate a strong word, but it's not that strong, <laughs> but you hate to be around them. Because every time you're around them, you feel drained. You say, oh man, I hate going to so-and-so's house. They're just such a, a drag. They're so negative and I leave there so tired. You know, that's an individual who is pulling from you and you're charging them, but you're not receiving a charge back. Okay, and it can be depleting. So within a body that's striving towards the same goals and, and the same imperatives, what you'll find is that there's a sharing of energy. I charge you you charge me okay so just like when I watch my students do certain things when they call me and they say oh I'm finally getting this nine position Obi I did such and such and such I did a reading for this other student they were going through something and it was accurate I can't believe it you know I get charged you see that's the sharing of energy because now you you're you're kind of confirming my leadership and then I can confirm your studentship like yeah that's it you're getting it it's working and at the same time unbeknownst to you you're, you're telling me your teaching style is working <laughs> you know so th there's that dual charge but ultimately we're all still working for that one goal of our new and to be new people because remember unity requires regeneration you can't unify without regeneration that's the key um, but we're going to get deeper into it. I just wanted to share a few points on it um, in this segment, just to kind of give you the primer before we get deeper. And speaking of unity, uh, August 14th, 2016, this, this year, August 14th, I will be releasing the 14 African Principles uh, book, the 14 African Principles. And when we speak about the original imperative and the goals and the ideas and the standards, uh, you have it right there in that particular book. And like I said, everything I, I build, everything I write, everything I say is the answer to what you've already asked me. I know the answers before they're coming, you know. Um, so it's more than just me talking and sharing every time. Ori means head. Sa means select. Uh, you know, it's beyond Arisha. You got to understand that. So, you know, when I write a book or uh, I do a video or I do a show, it's to answer a question that needs to be to be asked and my job as a jegna is to equip you for your task so if your task is to be the spleen or to be a chakra house or to be the spine or to be a nerve ending my job is just to equip you to perform that that task for the organism so that way we can create the product 
known as unity and unity comes through through a lot of work unity is earned usually it comes over this concept we know as time but it comes over time it's not something you just jump up and say we grab hands and we pump fists and say we're unified that's not unity it's not gonna work like that because i don't know you if if the right leg doesn't know the left leg it doesn't even know when it needs to compensate if it doesn't know it it doesn't even know when it needs to put more pressure on itself because it doesn't even know what the left leg does you see that's that's the value of assembling amongst yourselves well, what are you doing oh i do blogs for our new oh i do a video blog for our new you know oh i'm i'm helping chief with 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 the newsletter oh i'm i'm doing this i'm doing i want to give away some of the stuff we got we're working on but i do this part i do that part oh wow well i do this part okay cool well listen if you ever need help with that, I also can do this or this, that, that, just let me know if it gets too heavy for you. That's the sympathy. That's the touching. That's the sharing of energy. Now we know what each one is doing, so we know when we need to compensate, give more energy to a certain area, or give less energy to a certain area. You know? And that creates that health of unity. But we'll, we'll get much deeper into this, you know? Um, but I just wanted to, like I said, give you a primer. So, thank you all for listening up until this moment. Uh... This has been Chief Speaks, and make sure, if you're not a member of our new spiritual training, that you sign up. Become a member. Uh, take a class, but become a member of our new spiritual training. And for those of you, like I said, who are in situations, whether it's jail time or I just don't know what I'm here to do, it's best that you get a reading. Um, some things can be answered generally, but some things need to be answered personally, and that addresses the question about Am I just, or are the readings just some general information that anybody could say, or are they uh, custom to the individual? Um, yeah, you kind of should. Well, I'm gonna leave that question. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that question alone because it was one of them, those borderline questions. Like, are you being rude? <laughs> But yeah, but anyway, you know, so I would I would urge for those of you who need to get readings or Itefar Life Path readings, the ones who let you know, okay, this is what you're here to do. This is the spirit family that you were born out of. These are some of your challenges in previous lives. These are some of your taboos. But when, you know, and get that full body reading that you may need. You're welcome to do that as well. But in any event, you know, we'll be here Tuesday and Thursday for community radio. Uh, 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern, live call in. I urge you all to call in, 347-945-7680. And then after that, I'll be right back here next Sunday uh, with more Chief Speaks and also the 14 African Principles work will be released. And like all my other works, I try to keep them. What takes me so long, honestly, is cutting down the books. It's not actually the writing of them, it's the cutting them down. Um, and, you know, because books are in some ways becoming obsolete. So I, I try to make them easier and easier and easier to read without diluting uh, the effectiveness of the message. And that sometimes um, takes a, a measure of mental power and focus. Uh, it takes a little while to do that, to make them simpler. All right, until such time, I want to thank you all for tuning in to another segment of Chief Speaks. Be well. Anu Nation is home to the Anu Spiritual Order founded by Chief Jegna Haru Yuya Asan Anu. Some of the components of Anu Nation are Anu Life Global Ministries, Enlightenment and Transformation, Sadulu House, and Osiris Life Spiritual Services. SaduluHouse.com is the school component of Anu Nation where spiritual empowerment through education and training is emphasized. One way that is accomplished is through our monthly webinars. Our webinars are packed with foundational information, rituals, and live instruction to empower your spiritual work. At SaduluHouse.com, you can view our diverse list of topics for this year that range from meditation to sex magic. And you can also register for any of the webinars at your convenience, sign up for our introductory Orisha class, schedule a spiritual reading, and sign up for the Anu Spiritual Training Course. Enlightenment and Transformation is the media component of Anu Nation. Here, you can view all of our archive shows from over the years to our current segments. They include Chief Speaks, Masterminds Monday, 
a new Asafo, Thunderground Thursdays, and Foundational Fridays. You can also visit us on our YouTube channels. They are Enlightenment and Transformation, Orisha Yoruba, and Anu Nation. Osiris Life Spiritual Services is for those who are ready to take the necessary actions to bring your life into holistic balance. Here we offer consistent monthly one-on-one -on -one coaching, solutions that are tailored just for you, practical hands-on self-development techniques that will accompany your monthly readings, and customized practical strategies designed for you that guarantee positive results. Simply choose the package that best fits your needs. And last but not least, AlphaOmegaStore.com. The Alpha Omega Store is our online botanica where we offer divination tools, herbs and incense, DVDs, books, and other hard to find ritual items. You can also get our best selling foundational book, Grasping the Root of Divine Power. Other great works from Anu Nation are Shrine and Altar, Solutions for Dysfunctional Family Relationships and natural hair for young women. All great books to assist you on your journey. To find out more on how to get involved with Anu Nation, visit our websites and YouTube channels and be sure to sign up for our monthly newsletter.